America used to be known for huge rear-wheel drive sedans. Yes, until the Detroit 3 decided they only wanted to build SUVs and everything else went front-wheel drive. So we have these two cars, the Charger SRT and the Chevy SS. Big V8s, four doors, rear-wheel drive. This is everything America used to do really, really well. This car makes me want to bury the throttle everywhere I go. It has that raw bar brawler attitude about it and that gets a little bit addictive. Both of the cars that we're driving are big American muscle cars, right? Well, this was built in Elizabeth, South Australia, the Holden Commodore platform. It's what's called the VF chassis for the Holden Commodore, and that also currently underpins the Camaro and the Chevy Police Pursuit vehicle. It's actually fairly similar to the chassis that was put on the Pontiac G8 for the couple of years it was sold in the US. They stripped that chassis down, they made it a little bit lighter. It is slightly altered throughout, However, the hard points are the same, the same wheelbase, even the same engine as the G8 had. Chevy chose to use just the SS name on this car. It is not the Impala or the Malibu. That must mean this is a pretty special car. Now, historically, the SS name has been a trim level on many of Chevy's cars. The Camaro SS, you can go back to the Chevelle SS, the Malibu SS, the last rear-wheel drive performance sedan that Chevy made was the Impala SS, which was a Chevy Caprice, essentially, with an Impala SS badge on it and a bunch of the police pursuit version on that car. Now, I'm all for this recipe. I personally, I love sleepers. I'm a huge fan of giant power in a subtle car. Now, take a look at this car. It's nicely sculpted. There's a lot going on on the aluminum hood. There's a lot of nicely resolved surfaces. But again, if you didn't know what this car was, you'd just kind of think it's another boring sedan. The SS just looks like a variation on the Malibu. I want wider fenders. I want more aggression. If they're going to make kind of a halo sedan for Chevrolet, why not go all out? The only thing that really makes it look unique are the taillights. That's the way you definitely know this isn't a Malibu. And those taillights, they don't really look like anything else in the Chevy lineup, which is a nod to the fact that they're a Holden to begin with. I'm going back and forth between loving sleepers that are subtle, but for this market, I think Chevy should have pushed it more. The other problem I have about it, everything on the front is just outlined in chrome. Even the window trim is all chrome. It's not trying to be a luxury car. It's trying to be a sports sedan. So why even go there? This interior is the best of both these cars. Just about everything you could imagine having comes on this car standard. The heated and cooled seats, dual climate control, the navigation, all of that is pretty much in. This car doesn't have any extra options. It's just the way the SS comes. The materials are great. The design is interesting. I like being here. I like sitting here. I feel like the interior has more personality than the exterior of the car. One very strange thing, though, is the steering wheel. It's small, but it's almost too thick. And it's off-center. I mentioned it to Paul. He thought I was insane. He sat down and said, nope, you're right, it is. It's about a half inch canted just off-center toward the door. But this is a good interior, and the seats feel good except they're still too big. I don't know what's going on with these, though. What is up with this little plasticky piece? It's not, it's not a cutout, it's like a stick-on. What, what are those for? The wheelbase on the SS is six inches shorter than the SRT, and most of that room is lost in the rear seats. These still have good rear seat, good rear seat room, but it's not cavernous like the SRT was. <laughs> a European car snob, and I admit that. But for this market and for what these cars are, they need to be ostentatious, they need to be wild, and they make you want to give the middle finger to everyone. The SS is just sort of a fast sedan. 
the SS is nearly as quick as the SRT. In fact, they're almost identical at most of their speeds, but the SS doesn't feel as fast. Now, there's a lot of power here. Upper RPMs in the right gear, this is a fairly explosive car. But the SRT feels like a bomb is going off at all times. This is quite a bit more muted than that. But it's not slow. Yeah, this thing is fast. You don't have the sensation of speed in this car. They're just so capable. You don't really feel like you're suddenly going 100 or 120. That's pretty amazing. What's great about the SS is the engine note. This car just sounds badass, except for the sound doesn't match the character of the car. It, it just doesn't sound like what it looks like. Frankly, the SS sounds like the SRT should. It's kind of like the SRT8 is Aaron Neville and the SS is Rick Astley. You don't expect this voice coming out of this car. Now the transmission tries to be intelligent. It tries to calculate what gear you want to be in. But of course it is just a sporty automatic. This isn't a dual clutch. All of the upshifts are pretty clean. Some of the downshifts are a little messy. You can go blindingly fast in this car and still really not care. There's nothing about this car that makes me laugh. The place where the SS starts to really impress is in its agility. The SRT just feels big all the time and a little bit unpredictable with its size. This, while a large car, doesn't really feel it when you push it hard. The SS does handle better. It feels nimbler through these corners, and it does feel like it gets a little smaller around you, except this is still a big, heavy car. What I like about the Chevy is that it composes itself well on these roads, and it really glues itself down well. And what's impressive is the ride isn't punishing. This isn't a car that beats you up because it's so stiff. It's just confidence inspiring. This much torque, this much weight, with all the nannies turned off, and I'm not the least bit concerned. Throw it around and it's very predictable. The steering is electric. There's not much feel here, though it does have more feel than the SRT. And you can balance the chassis with just the throttle. At higher and higher speeds, I feel like I'm more in control of this car. Chevy is an easy car to drive quickly. The SS doesn't even come with Chevy's great magnetic ride control. If it did, this would be game over for a lot of cars. Without it, it's still surprisingly well controlled and really agile. I think they would want better suspension on this car. GM's got it. Why not stick it on here? It's only when I really start to hustle this car am I starting to smile and say, okay, I like it, I get it. Could you add more power? Yeah, but you can't change the character of the car. Here's the thing, Todd and I have driven the Corvette C7 and shocked by how good a car this is. So I'm bringing that outlook, that sensibility towards this car, thinking this car is gonna be just as good, and I'm feeling let down. This is related to the Corvette. It's not a four-door Corvette. It is related, though. It's got a lot of capability, more than you would expect, certainly more than it looks like. This is very buttoned down. If I didn't know better, I'd probably describe this car as German. I gotta say, it makes me feel good that America is still doing this. America is still building cars that are just that hot rod recipe. But there's nothing about it that really excites me about wanting to go drive it. It's definitely interesting and somewhat sad that when Chevy decided to go back to making rear-wheel drive cars, they'd given away so much of their rear-wheel drive architecture, they had to go to Australia to find it again. So here we have a muscle car for America, the land of the free, the home of the brave, but it's built in Australia, the land of the fosters, the home of the outback. And here I am, a guy that likes refinement and looks for that, but not for this market, not for these two cars. There's gotta be something more raw and emotional about it, and the SS just doesn't have it. Because compared to the SRT, 
This has none of the theatrics. It has none of the attitude. My God, it's going to drive. Four-door American Muscle is not our normal thing. No, it's not. And I came into this review thinking these are probably not going to be driver-focused cars. Okay, so what are these we are looking not for? Driver machines. These are hot rods. I'm looking for entertainment. I'm just looking okay. for the fun factor, knowing that these are giant engines screwed to a car. Well, in this case, a giant car. Yeah, that's yeah. really all they well, are. Well, that's the tradition they pick up for sure. But my question is, can they be more than that? I came into it going, okay, so you've got a big engine, that's fine. But can you give me more than that? Because that, for me personally, is not enough. Not mm -hmm. now. Interesting, because I had the opposite thought. You embraced the SRT. I embraced the entertainment, and it's just unbelievable fun. They're embracing their shameless, stupid behavior, and that car brings out... The SRT tagline should now be SRT8, shameless. And we're done. Shameless! It's fantastic. It's so fun. I will give you that's entertaining, but it's not the better driving car. The SS is the better driving car. And I, and I struggled with this a bit okay. because there are things about the SRT that are just, because it's shameless, because it has kind of theatrical nature and it's got character about it, Loads it's interesting. It's fun to drive. It's fun to look at. It's got menace. These are things the SS doesn't have. However, you get the SS on a back road and you drive it hard. It's nimbler. It handles better. It doesn't feel nearly as large as the SRT. No, it it's, actually, it's not as large as this car. The, the faster is. I pushed it, the better it felt. Why didn't GM use their brilliant magnetic ride control in this car? I had the exact same thought. It would, it would crush everything if it did. With the magnetic ride control in that car, yeah. it would be a class leader. And I yeah, wonder if they didn't do it just because of the Cadillacs. But Maybe, then why did they build it, though? Why even have it as a model? It's an interesting question. It's a marketing exercise, yeah. and it feels a little half-assed to me. But if I'm going to pick a car, four-door, V8, fun car, I've got to go with the one that is more fun to drive when I push it hard, and I've got to go SS. Not by much, but I've got to go SS. What you need is the more entertaining car. So we're agreeing. As always, we're agreeing on this, so the question <laughs> is, which one would you pick? For all that you're getting on this car, and if you're shopping in this category, I think you know what the answer is. Find a hot rod. The SRT is the car that you want to take all your friends to show them what it can do. And that's why it's my winner. I enjoyed the SS more, but this is a lot of fun. There's a character here that's that's addictive. It's, it just kind of gets under your skin and you want to drive a little more. It's a good car. But it doesn't elicit a very emotional response from me, whereas the Charger does. I mean, this is a car that in its marketplace, with its competitors, it is the most affordable performance.